I don't study with BTS lyrics as often as I used to, but I know how much you guys love to study with them, so let me show you exactly how I do this when I do. Okay, that sounds a little bit more than just a little weird. Today's video is in collaboration with two of my best internet friends. One of them is intermediate in Japanese and the other is intermediate in Chinese and they're gonna share some tips and resources for studying those languages. So I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Hey everyone, my name is Chloe, also known as Triple Empty Studies. My main focus at the moment is Japanese and in this week's video I'm going to be talking about learning Japanese through manga. So if that's your thing, come say hi. Hey everyone, my name is Dano. I have been learning Chinese for around two and a half years now and in this week's video I'm going to be talking about how to learn Chinese through C-dramas. Although I'm pretty sure you could use these tips for any language. So if you're interested, come and check out my channel and I'll see you there. Bye! Alrighty, so let's jump into that method, shall we? Go go! Today I want to study Life Goes On. I've already pulled the lyrics from a random website, so I'm going to open them up on GoodNotes to start annotating them. It's important that I mention that sometimes the lyrics online have typos or incorrect spacing that can make it harder for someone to study the lyrics, especially as a beginner where you really, you know, you don't know the words and the grammar as well as someone who's maybe like intermediate or advanced in Korean. So if you happen to have the actual physical album and they included some kind of booklet or photo book with the official lyrics, I would definitely take the time to double check the version you copied from, you know, online and the one from the album. Even though I'm intermediate in Korean, there are still times where I second guess my understanding of a verse because of how poetic BTS can be or just any song in general can be. Sometimes there's a metaphor or something and while I think I might know what it means, I don't want to learn it incorrectly so I will double check the translations and this is also a good time to mention that I've noticed that sometimes the lyrics are translated incorrectly into English. I can't really speak for other languages but I would assume it's the same thing. Um, sometimes you'll notice that like the lyric translation just doesn't make sense given the definitions of the words in the verse or what you think it is and you'll notice that it's related differently on different websites according to who's translating it. So if the translation of what you found for that verse doesn't sound right, it probably isn't. So keep that in mind as you're studying. Now it's time to start annotating. I like to use a lavender purple color to highlight the words I don't know and a light blue color to highlight the words or phrases I either can't find the definition for or that I did find a definition for, but they just don't make sense given the context. This is the same color coding system I use when studying with other resources, so textbooks, old topic tests, things like that. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend only studying a small portion of the song so that you don't feel overwhelmed by all the new content and all the words you need to define and all the grammar structures you now have to look up or would like to look up. Um, so maybe just do the chorus or your biases portion or your favorite part of the song. I also think it would be a good idea for those of you that are beginners or even upper beginners to look up videos like learn Korean with K-pop or K-pop lyric breakdown and similar videos that kind of just break down the lyrics for you and guide you through the learning process. Um, and I'm just saying this because it can be kind of hard to see where the word stops and where the grammar starts. Um, especially if you're kind of like new to Korean, but you want to learn with K-pop songs. Um, so you can find videos like these from Margarita, also known as MSM, or Korean Unni, um, and just other like Korean teaching channels. If you have followed my channel from uh, its inception, you would know that I used to make a lot of these types of videos. I don't really do it anymore. I know a few of you have been asking when I will make the next one, and I don't know, they're just not my style anymore. I don't enjoy making them, so. Yeah, I just thought a uh, good time to slip that little information in. Looking back at the lyrics, since I've reached an upper intermediate level in Korean, I'm going to go ahead and just read the first group of verses to see if there's any words I don't know. If you're a beginner, you can just look at the first verse or go verse by verse since there's going to be more words and more grammar structures that you're not familiar with. Once I've highlighted a few new words or unfamiliar grammar structures, I'll open up the Naver Dictionary app to start looking them up. While Naver isn't the only good Korean dictionary app out there, it's definitely my favorite. I can't really explain why though. 
I guess it just has something to do with the fact that it was the first Korean dictionary app I ever used when learning Korean, so it has some kind of like sentimental value to it or something, but this is the one I always use and I recommend it to you guys. If the word has multiple definitions, I'll write them down. Sometimes I'll write down a few fixed expressions if Naver Dictionary lists any that I think I can see myself using in conversation or seeing in a TV show or a news article. Sometimes you'll notice that I write down uh, fixed expressions that are really formal or only used in like government circumstances or something. Usually it means it's something that I can find used like in a crime show or something and so I want to note it just because I really enjoy that type of content. While defining the new words, sometimes there are a few that look like they aren't pronounced the way they are spelled. I've mentioned this several times before on my channel, but I never actually studied pronunciation and sound changes for Korean. I just acquired them since when I first started learning Korean, I was pretty much in Korea after the first two months. Um, so sometimes I like to go and Oops. verify that the Oops. sound change that I think is there is actually there. And for that, I have to go to the Korean version of Naver Dictionary. If you're on a desktop, you can just find the word that says Google in Korean and it'll switch over. If you're on the app, it's a little harder to do, but it's still there. The next thing that I do is pretty much a no duh. I think everybody does this, but it's part of the process. So I have to bring it up right. And that is once I have gone through enough verses or found enough new like Korean words and grammar structures or whatever, I will play the song and follow along with the lyrics. So even though I've read the lyrics now, I've studied them, I've looked up the new words, that's all great. But in the song, there's other like distracting things that could prevent me from actually hearing it in like three days, right? So that could be the word is pronounced funny because they're like changing up their pitches or maybe they're rapping and it's going by really, really fast to where it's kind of clipped or the pronunciation is kind of weird because they wanted to fit a certain rhythm. So. I'll go in and make sure that I can hear all the new words as well as all the words that I already know but might not have recognized when I was just, you know, leisurely listening to the song. Once I've listened to that group of verses a few times, I will start trying to basically sing along with the artist because it kind of helps me get like the actual rhythm of the song. It also helps me say the words because again, reading and defining and analyzing and then listening are different skills from speaking so it kind of just helps me remember the content better so i always recommend that you do that you don't have to do that but you know it does help when you be going to that norebang and trying to sing your favorite song since i don't really study korean with korean songs as much as i used to like a few years ago i don't take too much of an effort to take these words and then add them to my memorized courses or anything like that really but if you are someone who is using korean songs to really learn korean vocabulary or just learn korean in general i highly recommend and you take those words and put them in your memorize list, in your Anki, Quizlet, your physical deck of flashcards, your list of vocab words in that spiral of yours. Whatever method you're using to like remember what vocab to study, I highly recommend you add those words to that list. I know when I was using K-pop songs a lot to study Korean, like a few years ago, I noticed that especially like with BTS, and I'm sure this is the case with like all K-pop idols, um, they use a lot of the same like poetic words over and over again in different songs. Like over the past few years that I've been studying BTS lyrics, the number of times I've heard the same like poetic words that I was thinking like, oh, I'll never hear that word again. They use it a lot. So while you might not hear it when you make that like trip to Korea or something, or you may never use it like yourself in conversation, you will hear it again later at some point. So it's not like useless or anything like that. So definitely add it to those lists if you were trying to remember those words and that content long-term. Now that I've defined all the new words and phrases in the song, sometimes there are a few that their definition doesn't really make sense given the context 
of the verse or there is no definition because it's slang and neighbor dictionary doesn't have a definition or i couldn't find the definition on google in that case i will use apps like hi native and hello talk to ask native korean speakers what's going on so when it comes to like posting these questions usually i will wait till late evening or really early morning the next day um, just because that's when koreans are awake given the time zone that i'm in so i found that i'm way more likely to get uh, more responses and just quicker responses to my questions when i post like you know according to when they're awake so if you're going to need help or if you want to ask a native for some clarification on something i highly recommend you use one of those apps to get those answers again chloe and Denai have uploaded videos to their channels to help you learn japanese with manga and chinese with chinese dramas so definitely go check it out links are in the description and i'll see you guys in the next video so tell me bye you guys bye